Awesome. And then if we could have, we'll go in order first through fifth. So please introduce who you are, um, your semester, obviously, and then what your semester curriculum uh, consists of. So we'll start. Hi. Yeah. I'm Katie. I'm a first semester. And so I'm just starting out. It's only been five or six weeks. So I'm figuring it all out. But this semester, we have like all the fundamentals of med surge. So we have fundamentals class, a clinical and skills lab class, a physical assessment class, and then evidence-based practice. Thank you. And then Tanya? Hi, okay, I'm Tanya. I'm a second semester nursing student. So we have four classes this term. So we have our med surge, like pathophysiology class. We have a nursing informatics, a nursing research, and then our clinicals once a week. And then Natalie. Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm a third semester student and our curriculum this semester is all about like OB and PEDS, which is really exciting. Um, and we also have another pathophysiology med surge with Darcy as well. And then we have clinical twice a week. So it gets a little bit more intense. <laughs> and so it's, yeah. You got it, you got it. <laughs> you got it, Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> So my name, oh, sorry, are you supposed to introduce <laughs> No, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Brooke, everyone. Nice to see you all. Um, I'm a fourth semester student. So that semester we work on, you, it's kind of split in half. Half the semester you do mental health, you do mental health clinicals, and then the other half you do um, critical care. So like ICU and things like that. We do some health policy class. class. We do a... I'm trying to think of our class. I, I literally just call it like our case study class. Yeah. It kind of like pulls together all the pathophysiology we've learned and we apply it towards like patient scenarios. Um, so yeah, awesome. Okay. And then Tasha. Hi everyone, um, my name is Tasha and I'm a fifth semester nursing student. So I'll be graduating in December and fifth semester's focus is a little different from kind of all the other semesters you've basically learned everything you need to know and you're just kind of putting it into practice. So um, our focus this semester is like community and public health. And then we also have like our um, senior preceptor clinical. Um, so we have those two clinicals and then we just have like a leadership, um, which is our capstone lecture class and then lecture for public health. So that's it. Awesome. So does any just so we can pertain to you guys, does anyone have any kind of general questions for all of the representatives to start out with? Or would you want me to just go off of like my pre-set questions? Are there any strong opinions about that? No. Okay. Uh, oh. Start with the list. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay, Yo, thank you for the input. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so just super simple. What made you all want to become a nurse? I just really wanted to help people and take care of people and I felt like nursing was a good path for me for that. Perfect. Yeah, um, I have a blood disorder my whole life. So I was in and out of hospitals like ever since I was like a little kid. So I always wanted to do nursing and be that impact in somebody's life. For me, I always liked science and I always wanted to work with kids. So I wanted to have a good mixture with kids and science. So I figured peds would be a perfect place for me. Yeah, I think I, my brother was in the hospital a lot growing up. And so just being around them uh, in the hospital and just seeing what a big impact nurses can make, whether it be positive or negative, um, and try to be a positive impact in other people's hospital experience. Um, kind of like what everyone else has already said, um, like Natalie, I really like the science aspect of it. Um, but I wasn't necessarily looking to be like a doctor. I like the more patient care and interacting with patients part of nursing. And so I think nursing is like a perfect combination between the science and then helping people and interacting with people. So Beautiful. Okay. My next question is how many times did you guys apply to the program before you were accepted? Got in the first time I applied, so I only had to apply once. Yeah, I applied once for my. I also applied once. I did not apply once. I got in. Yeah, I didn't, yes. <laughs> didn't get in the first time. It's okay. It happens, everyone. Like, yes, I got in the second time. Um, but yeah, keep going. <laughs> 
Um, I applied once, but I also got in off the wait list. So I was actually 20th on the wait list my first time applying and I got in off that wait list. So I just applied the one time. Awesome. Thank you. And then um, how many semesters did it take for you guys to complete your prerequisite classes? Um, I, this is my junior year, so I took two years to do all my classes, and then the last semester I applied, and so I'll graduate in four and a half years. Sorry, I'm trying to do the math in my head. I'm going to graduate in five years, like from nursing school, so. Um, I think I'm the same as Katie. I took two years, and then, then I applied, so I'll graduate in four and a half. Yeah, I finished prerequisites probably like a year and a half or so into school but I applied the first time didn't get in so I I'll be in school for five five years because Chico State's program is five semesters um but yeah um like Katie and Natalie I'll be um doing four and a half years so I did all my prereqs in the first two years perfect super straightforward awesome so were any of you involved in any kind, anything you'd consider an extracurricular activity in prerequisite classes and in nursing school? So like sports, clubs, a job, Greek life, like do you guys have any experience or any say? And do you think that it's reasonable that students like can participate in these activities with like the pre-nursing classes and in nursing school? I didn't do a ton of like organized clubs or anything, but you can definitely have a social life and you can definitely prioritize things that are important in your life. So school does not have to take over every single thing. Yeah, um, I've definitely maintained a social life. I love hanging out with my friends. I also, I've worked at T-Bar since my sophomore year of prereqs and I've worked there still through nursing school. So you could definitely do a job in school pretty easily. Um, I didn't have a job, but I did manage having a social life, which was fun. I mean, you know, um, but yeah, if you manage your time really well, you can, I know a lot of my pre-nursing friends had jobs and they were working full time and they were able to get in the first time with me. So it's possible. Yeah, it's like one of those things where I, I had, a, I got a job my freshman year um and then i also made it a goal of mine to like get involved um in clubs and different things um and just to kind of make the best of your college experience because you're only an undergrad once you know so it's definitely doable it's just what everyone else has been saying it comes down to time management and just being like okay like when it's study time gotta study you know and then like me time gonna do me you know work time whatever so yeah totally doable but just definitely manage your time. Um, yeah, like everyone else said, like time management is key. I did work um, during pre-nursing school. I worked as a desk attendant in the dorms. Um, and then I also participated in the Chico State Pet Band and I was in a flute choir as well. So it definitely is possible to like manage your time in addition to like music is not nursing related at all, but you can definitely have a social life and manage everything else. Um. What was your guys's individual um, biggest obstacle, you say, when you were applying to nursing school? Um, I think the biggest obstacle is just figuring out how to study for yourself because everyone works a little bit differently. So trying to figure out exactly what way worked for me took a little bit of time, but then I kind of got in my groove. Yeah, I definitely think for me, it was like really figuring out my time for the application because my freshman year, I kind of came in, you know, as like a freshman in college and I didn't really like have my nursing mindset on. So I kind of, you know, like went through anatomy and didn't really focus as much as I should have. So then my sophomore year, I really put in the work and then figured out like, I would definitely look at the application earlier than later. It's my best recommendation. For me, it was definitely the tease. Um, that was my biggest obstacle. Um, I'm just not a great test taker and it was really hard for me to grasp that and I, I took it a few times. So, I mean, we'll, I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit more, but that was a huge obstacle for me. Yeah, the tease was like my biggest just like hurdle and it, yeah, it, um, that would be, that was the thing that changed my points from the first time that I applied to the second time that I applied was my tease score. 
Um, I think for me, it was kind of the like lack of um, like information about how to apply and like the steps of applying like that's at least when I applied it wasn't very like out there in terms of like how you do it and so there wasn't a lot of people you could ask so it was just kind of like figuring it out by yourself and going through that process. Yeah, definitely. I felt personally that the tease was the biggest like stress or an obstacle. So just an emphasis on that topic. Um, again, just forewarning, like uh, I said this at the beginning, but the School of Nursing's application is evolving. So it's going to change from like how we all applied and what the standards were for our application. Um, so with that being said, can you guys give any info on how you studied for the T's? Um, if you care to share, you don't have to like how many times you took it. Um, just like tips specific to that. Yeah, so I only took the T's one time and I managed to get the score that I wanted, which I was very happy about. And so I use the ATI book and the Kaplan ATI, or that Kaplan T's book. So those are the ones that I used. And I would recommend just lots of practice questions, just running through ones on the ATI website or just like, I downloaded a couple apps and so like five questions a day, every day I would just get in the habit of like, okay, this is how the questions work. This is the answers and just like, trying to figure out how to answer the questions because you have there's like a strategy in a way that the questions work so you have to figure out how to answer them and make it work okay i definitely recommend there's a yellow book it's from momentrix it's um i bought it off amazon for like 30 bucks that was like my biggest thing i should get that one <laughs> she's holding it up that was like my lifesaver i used that and it really was like pretty close to the test. Obviously it goes into more detail in like the science, but like that's a really good basis. Um, my second advice is to just study with like with people. I know you don't always know nursing people and now there's like Zoom and stuff, but if you study, when I bounce questions back and forth, I feel like I understand the material a lot more. Uh, me personally, so I took it five times just because I needed the 90. So the first three times I got an 86. <laughs> so it was really frustrating. And then I took it the fifth time and I got a 96, so it's possible. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I, I feel you on that, Tanya. I took it six times and I know it might be different for you guys. I don't know when it's gonna change, but um, yeah, I, I struggled with that a lot and the questions are just very nitpicky and it, it takes time to figure out how to study for it. But I did use that yellow book and it helped me a lot. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but I found out about it later when I was taking the teas. I found these like Facebook support study groups um, that are from people all over uh, the States and they share a lot of good tips on there and a lot of good like study guides. And that is what helped me a lot. Yeah, I would say for me, it was, for me, the content, well, there's practice tests through ATI and if you're able to purchase them, I, I thought that they were very helpful for myself because I think one of the biggest things for me was just figuring out how, like what ATI was asking for when they were asking questions um, and to get the right answer. And so that was something that was really helpful for me using those. I even just used videos like for me, science and math and English composition were like the ones that I was weakest in. So I would go on Khan Academy and look at, oh, like going through the skin, whatever, like skin layers, you know, like that stuff or like English stuff um, that I like, even just like sentence structure, like it's just not in my brain. Um, so that was really helpful. And then when I um, I also found out about this later when I was already in the program, but there's Quizlets online that have a lot of practice questions that are actually very helpful as well, which are, you know, people put out and they're some of the, I think some of them people ask to pay for, but a lot of them I found for free. So that's also really helpful. Um, I'm kind of a combination of everyone here. So I took the T's test three times. I got like an 85 the first time, an 87 the second time, and an 89 the third time. Um, and the way that I studied, and I, I 
probably wouldn't recommend this, but I didn't study the first time and I just took the first time raw and to see what I got. And then the way that I studied was I focused on the areas of improvement. Like once I took it, took the test, it gives you like little topics to review. And I just studied those after the first time. That being said, it does look like the number of tests the times you can take the tests are limited. So I definitely recommend at least studying the first time. Um, I use the little, the small red ATI book from ATI itself, um, which I found really helpful. It's just kind of like a short brief summary of all the topics you need to know. Um, and I also did the practice test that Brooke mentioned. And one of the things that I would take note of is kind of the rationale for like why you got something right or why you got it wrong because kind of like what Brooke was saying it's really about kind of how learning how to take the test and not necessarily like the knowledge um so if you read the rationale for like why you got something wrong and get an idea of what they're looking for um that really helped me as well I also know that there, there's a bunch of good YouTube videos out there. Um, so that's a free resource for you guys to study. Um, there's YouTube videos that goes through like the science part, the writing part, the English part, the math part, um, kind of all of that for you guys. So that's what worked for me. I also just wanna add something really quick that this is the book that ATI makes and I definitely recommend getting this and you can buy it in a package on ATI, which is the company and the website that make the test. And you can buy like practice, pra, practice exams. And I would definitely recommend doing that because those are very similar to what the test is actually like. Awesome. Thank you. And then um, just so everyone knows, uh, we don't have all the time in the world. So all of the questions that we don't get, um, I'm going to take a little screenshot of it and maybe I can have like a Google Doc going for nursing students to add to. Um, but there was one question that I do want to address because this is a really common question and I think like maybe me and Brooke can touch on it for like no more than a couple minutes is what did you do before you got into the nursing program because both of us had that one semester of time where we didn't finish our prerequisite classes. I know I personally I took on I had two jobs that semester um, and I kind of took it as a semester to have fun and just kind of relax a little bit before getting into nursing school. Um, I got really involved in my sorority and other clubs on campus, um, tried to like spend more time with friends kind of before all the craziness started. So that was my experience. Um, I know some people use that semester to do classes for a minor, which is something I really recommend. I actually kind of wish I like worked towards classes towards a minor, but I took just kind of like fun health related classes that I thought could kind of round out my nursing. And a lot of those health related classes were actually upper divisions that went towards my degree. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was putting in the chat the link to the ATI website. Um, that's where you would go to sign up for the T's when you're ready. To, I, um, to take it. Sorry, I'm still on the tease. Um, but <laughs> um, so I would I would say for everyone that, you know, everyone has their own journey with nursing and whether you get on the first time or you takes a while. Um, if nursing is really what you want to do, like heck yeah, go for it. And I wish if I were to go back and tell my freshman year self something, I would be like, hey, like look at other schools. There's so many different nursing schools all throughout California. And um, each school is going to have their own set of prerequisites and like requirements that might be a little different from Chico State's. And so I know for me, I only looked at Chico State's program. And so I kind of cornered myself in a hole uh, by the time that I was like ready to apply and like eligible and all that stuff. Um, but to answer your question, Sydney, the first time when I, I didn't get in. And so I was like, okay, so I picked up a minor. I picked up gerontology. Um, I'm still trying to finish that um, now, <laughs> but, um, I'm picking up, I picked up a minor and I started kind of that was that in between semester was the time that I really was like, okay, like I got to get this tease down. I forgot to say that I know that I took it seven times. Okay. Like it's, <laughs> that thing was like my worst. It was just like the biggest hurdle for me. Um, and of course now that you can only take it twice, um, it's definitely something to keep in mind and to, all of that stuff but yeah studying and 
um, yeah, working, um, picking up a minor or something like that is definitely something good to do. Maybe pick up, like I didn't go to do like a CNA program or an EMT program, but that's also a really good experience. Um, like those people that did it in my semester, I remember like being in first semester and being like, wow, like they already have like that patient care aspect of like experience. And so that's really great. Um, any, sorry, just like trying to keep up with all the questions. Any questions about taking the T's um, twice, whether it's twice total, twice per application? Um, I'm just gonna say that I'm not 100% sure, but the new like um, rules that come out will say for the application should outline that very clearly. So if you're patient and wait for that email, which you all will get from Julie, um, that should be outlined for you. But my understanding was that it was twice total. Um, okay, sorry. So next one. Um, what has been your guy? I know poor, like Katie has like barely been <laughs> in, but do you have any nursing classes or clinicals that have been your favorite or that you maybe like haven't experienced yet, but you really look forward to? So yeah, obviously I've only been in for a couple weeks, but since most of this stuff is on Zoom, it's really nice when we do get to go into skills lab and actually practice taking blood pressure and doing vitals and doing an assessment. It's really nice to just actually do it on another person as opposed to just like watching a video. Oh, this is how you do it. It's, that's really not very helpful. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I was in that weird group where COVID happened and then I was first semester last term and so we didn't get to go to the clinicals at all. So that was really heartbreaking. But fortunately enough, actually this last week, I got to go to clinicals for the first time and it is like life-changing. Like you guys are so excited to be nurses. I went in and like I had patients and it was crazy. Like it was just so real. They're like, here's the machine. Like, let me try to use it. And you just like have a real person in front of you. So it's just, it's really cool when you learn all the things and you actually get to apply it. Yeah, for me, I've always just been so excited for OB and PEDS. And now that we're finally in OB clinical, it's, it's amazing. Like all me and my friends are just, raving about it how fun it is and like how cool it is to experience something other than med surge so I don't know how much I can share but I really enjoy it <laughs> yeah I mean I've I've kind of enjoyed I've I don't know I, I haven't had a favorite thus far I think they're all really cool I think I'm taking a lot from all the different ones that we're having and I think what is just really cool about nursing school in general is that you get a little bit of everything. And so say OB and PEDS isn't your, like, isn't your thing. And like, that's cool. You only have one semester of it, you know? Um, but yeah, but I'm excited about critical care. I haven't gone to critical care yet. So I'm excited about that. Um, my favorite is kind of like one lecture class and one clinical class. Um, but um, the class that Sydney and Brooke are taking right now in fourth semester with Darcy, that's like the case study class where you, she kind of presents you with a, a patient and like they're presenting symptoms and you kind of figure out like what's the nursing care. And it, at least for me, it really helped to piece together like everything you're doing. And um, it just like clicked for me like in that class. And then um, kind of like Brooke was saying, I really enjoyed my ICU clinical in fourth semester. And so that was probably one of my favorite ones out of nursing school. So how much studying do you guys, can you guys, um, estimate kind of per semester compared to how much you were studying as a pre-nursing student? So far for me it's definitely more than pre-nursing but you can still find time to relax but you just have to really make sure you're scheduling everything and things don't pop up at the last minute. It's kind of weird for me I feel like it was backwards like I feel like pre-nursing I studied way more because I wanted to get A's and all like anatomy and phys and micro and stuff and I mean, so I've only been through first semester, but I thought it was like very doable. Like I worked almost full time and I didn't, I studied obviously for each exam, but it wasn't like too many hours for me. I feel like it was kind of the same for me. I think I put a lot of effort into all the prereq sciences and like really trying to get those A's to get, in, to get it for the application. So I feel like I studied way harder in pre-nursing just because 
it's a goal to get in but once you're in the program I was a little bit more relaxed on myself like okay you're in the program now you don't need to be perfect all the time so I just wasn't as hard on myself um it's kind of a hard question I I think for me it took a while to like figure out I felt like nursing school was a little different um and just felt more real like I was like oh shoot like there's p real people at the other side of this you know um so it's a little more for me I studied a little more um than I think I did in pre-nursing but um yeah I mean it's still doable it's still something that you can definitely manage. I think the biggest thing for me that I've learned is just like flexibility, like some things just like come up and you're just like, okay, you gotta do that at that time, but yeah. Um, for me, kind of like what um, Natalie and Tanya were saying, I feel like I studied more during pre-nursing school than I did in nursing school. Um, Cause I like worked really hard to get those good grades in pre-nursing school and there was a lot of pressure to get into the program. But um, once I was in the program, it was like less pressure to do as well. Um, that being said, it's also kind of a, it was a different type of studying for me. Like um, pre-nursing was more like content based and like trying, at least for me, I'm a memorizer, so I like was memorizing all the content and stuff. Whereas in nursing school, it's more like application um, type questions instead of content based really. So um, that's where kind of it was different. And I, I studied less because like the, they do a good job of reinforcing like the content. At least that was my experience. Perfect. And then um, this was kind of a while back, but considering the applications changing. Um, do you guys have any recommendations really quickly for when they should take the T's or when they recommend like starting to study or taking it? I know studying we kind of covered, but do you guys have any comments on that? Yeah, so I, after my freshman year, I took a chemistry class over the summer and then the last half of the summer was like really studying for the T's a lot. And so then I ended up taking it at the end of the summer. So that's how I fit it in. So that way I had time to take it if I needed to do it more, but I ended up not needing to. Um, I would definitely, I know all the sciences are kind of in a different order for people, but I would recommend taking it after anatomy phys because that's like the vast majority of the T's test science. There was like a little bit of chemistry micro that I remember, but I remember it was like extremely anatomy phys physiology based. So I would, definitely have those done or like almost done before you take it. I think I would agree with Tanya. Um, a lot of the science is, the science is a really hard part and a lot of it is anatomy and physio. Um, so having it like fresh in your brain there is, is a really good thing to have. Um, I know with it changing the whole T's taking time thing, um, for me, I, I took it really early. So that way I could have plenty of time to take it as many times as I needed to. I know it's going to be different with you guys, but I would just get it started once that you finish anatomy and physio. Yeah, I, there's not too much else to add. It, most of it, well, okay, there, I don't know if everyone's familiar, but there's four sections on the T's. Um, so there's going to be reading, um, math, which is like, I don't know, what'd you say, like algebra? It's not anything super crazy. And it's then it'll like be- this ratio, very simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, <laughs> science, which is mostly anatomy and phys, as we've talked about. Um, and then English composition. And so those are the four sections of the test. Um, yeah, kind of like what everyone else has said. Um, I took the T's test like the summer right after my first year my freshman year, so right after I took um, anatomy and physiology, I took the T's test, um, and then I ended up taking it the second time, like during that third semester, like the first part of fall, and then again over winter break um, in December. So that's when I would recommend it. Yeah, awesome, and sorry, multitasking. Um, I just wanna remind everyone, you don't have to spend a ton of money necessarily to perform well. There's Quizlets. Um, I used YouTube videos a lot, like Khan Academy for all the grammar 
stuff, um, you know, relying on friends. Maybe you have friends in the nursing program who held on to their tease materials. Um, just kind of a reminder like that, because I know it all gets kind of expensive. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, did each of you, oh, well, I guess you kind of answered that. My question was just like, did you always know you wanted to pursue nursing? And if you hadn't gotten into the program, was there a plan B major for you? Or uh, were you kind of considering any other routes in terms of going into the health profession? Yeah, I've always wanted to do something in the medical field. And so I didn't have like a specific Plan if I didn't get in, but it definitely would have been somewhere in the medical field doing something else other than nursing. Yeah, it was kind of bad, but my only plan was nursing. I didn't really have a backup. <laughs> um, if I, I was at one point, I was like, okay, if I really don't get in, I was really digging micro, but yeah, I didn't really have a backup. Actually, when I was thinking about um, majors in high school, I was planning on being a teacher, so totally opposite of healthcare, um, but I just loved science so much, so I was like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no backup plan really either, like, because I took the T's so many times, there was like, I had like existential crises, I guess, multiple, where I was like, oh my god, like I, <laughs> like my score went down, like what the heck, like what am I gonna do? Like I, I remember calling my dad after and being just like, dad, like I don't even know what I would do. And so again, like if nursing is what you really want to do, like go for it, look at other programs and Chico States, because yeah, there's a lot of different avenues that you can go. Um, like Katie mentioned, I always knew like I wanted to go into the middle school field. I wasn't sure like if it was nursing or something else, but um, I kind of threw all my eggs into the Chico nursing basket and I didn't necessarily have a backup plan, but I would strongly recommend like what Brooke was saying, looking into other schools. And if you know like nursing school is what you want or nursing is what you want, like you can always get your bachelor's degree in something um, related or something that you enjoy and then go back and do like a BSN to like RSN nursing program. So there's so many ways to get there. Um, yeah, you can do it if that's what you like really want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I personally, I, I did have a backup plan. Um, I was enrolled in all exercise physiology classes so that if I hadn't gotten into nursing school, I could pursue that major while maybe applying again. I have friends who took prerequisite classes at Chico State and ended up at nursing schools. Um, examples being San Francisco State, um, San Diego State. One of my best friends uh, graduated last semester and with a public health degree and she's pursuing a master's in nursing, which is like two years. And so she'll be a registered nurse and have her master's degree. So there are a lot of different paths to pursuing nursing. You know, everyone has their own timeline with it. Um, is there anything you guys don't like about the nursing major? Or any maybe negative parts to it? I know like, for example, waking up at like 5 a.m. before clinicals is a common kind of unfortunate one, but that's the reality of nursing. It's 12 hour shifts usually. So just kind of going off of that example or anything really. I don't think I've been in long enough to find a specific pattern that I'm not liking. So not yet. <laughs> I don't really think I have a negative. I mean, there's a lot more medications than I thought I'd have to know <laughs> and memorizing and saying them are really difficult, but like, I love nursing. It's great. It really is. I think for me, the fatigue just started to hit now. Um, this past week was my first week that I did an, a 12 and then an eight and then I had an exam. So I, last night I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm tired. But um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I loved it. It was rewarding. I got a lot of experience, a lot of hands-on stuff. And what, that feeling of everything being over with, I was like, oh, I can relax. So. Um, I think, I think, I mean, I really loved the program. I think it's awesome. Um, and I just think that one of the things I was talking about was just like how sometimes it can be a little unorganized or like things can pop up and so that can be tough if you have like a job outside of of school or like things like that but 
you learn to roll with the punches and go through it. And so, yeah. Yeah, um, kind of like what Sydney and Brooke mentioned, like um, there is a little bit of like an organization, um, but you learn to be flexible and you learn to be like on top of your things and you develop like really good time management skills. Like if you know you like want to work or have to work, like you um, will make that happen and then on top of like everything else. Um, and then also too, like Sydney mentioned the, the early mornings and um, I, so I was in clinicals and ride out in Marysville and those were 12 hour shifts and we had to be there at like six o'clock in the morning. So that involved like waking up at like four something, leaving around five. Um, and then this semester I have my preceptorship in Shasta Regional Medical Center in Reading and their shifts start at six. So that involves being up there at like 5.30. So it's longer days than like what you might be thinking, but I, in the end it's all worth it. But there is that like evidence. Um, there is that little bit of fatigue in there as well. Awesome. On kind of the note of management and organization, how do you guys individually stay organized with your schoolwork before the program, during the program? Has anything changed about, um, I don't know, the way you prefer to keep track of everything? Because I know, you know, both pre-nursing <laughs> school and nursing school there's a lot there's a lot of information and a lot of things to keep track of so i learned in pre-nursing and it's continuing in nursing school that i have to like write everything down on paper like i can type it out a million times and figure out the schedule but if it's not on paper it's not gonna stick so for me writing it down on paper really helps um for me i love using my phone i'm always on my phone like so I, this year recently, I noticed there's so many like assignments due. So I literally just get out my notepad and I literally write down all the assignments. And then every day I look at it and I put like due Thursday, due Friday. And then I erase it when I'm done with it. And then I always keep my email open. And I constantly check it every day. For me, I always try to like look out for my future self. So I say like, okay, this is due on Friday. I'll sh I should just get it done by Wednesday. So that way, if something else comes up, then I could have time for that. So I'm always like, okay, do it for your future self. You'll thank yourself later. And it, it always works. I'm like, okay, now I can go out and go on a run with someone or like do something fun. So just look out for your future self. Yeah, definitely look out for your future self. Um, I would say that I'm like Katie, where I, I'm very much like a kinesthetic learner, I guess. So I have to write things down all the time. Um, so I definitely have like a big schedule, like calendar thing that, you know, like I write in like, and I like have to like highlight stuff when I'm finished with it, check it off my list. I'm very much a list person. So I have my planner and then I also have like my Google calendar all set up um, so that I know where I need to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really going to be like when it comes to like studying and stuff, it's just going to be up to you and your best learning style and Um, kind of like what Katie and Brooke mentioned, like writing everything down on lists is like what helps me um, keep track of everything and stuff. Um, like I can show you my planner now. This is what it looks like. So definitely writing everything down. Um, but also kind of like what Natalie said is um, like being proactive and staying on top of things. So I look at stuff like on a week by week basis, like, okay, what's happening this week? And then try to like stay on top of it for like that week and that week only. And then like you move on to the next week. So that at least helps me prevent from being like overwhelmed, but still have like a focus of like what's happening this week. So, yeah. Awesome. So I know, um, Katie, you haven't been to the hospitals yet, but if you could kind of outline a day at clinicals or what that's been looking like and maybe the impact, you know, for us who are like older in the program, um, how the impact of like COVID-19 has kind of changed how students interact with patients, um, you know, while we're in the hospital because you know, we're gonna be virtual next semester too. So any like comments on that? I haven't been to the hospital, so the second semester. I mean, 
I've only been to the hospital once, <laughs> but um, literally this Sunday. But um, I can just tell you, I had a 12 hour day. We got there. I drove to Orville. So I woke up at like five and my teacher said to meet at seven. So I left at like six, so I didn't get lost. And then we were there, you help. So the first day, usually like first semester is what Katie's gonna do. Cause that's kind of what we're doing. We're playing catch up. Uh, you basically like follow a CNA around and you help them with all their things. You learn vitals, just like where they are, like in the hospital kind of get comfortable being in a hospital setting, and then we'll obviously like progress into harder things. Uh, so for third semester, at least, they, they kind of like start to expect more out of you as you go into the program. And I feel like third semester is the hump. So they're like, okay, now you guys know what to do. So for me, like, um, at least with my med surge clinical, she just expects us to have our meds ready and like everything's ready to go. and. It, it's really cool because you really feel like your own nurse like you're a nurse now like you're a big girl like <laughs> um, but yeah but for OB at least it's new to us so I'm doing a little bit more observing in that clinical rotation yeah um, every I think the common thing throughout all the semester well not all the semesters but like you go you show up and then you your teacher will, your professor will maybe like pair you up with a nurse or a CNA in some cases, and then you'll follow them around, um, go help with them with their patients. Um, I know I haven't gone to critical care yet. I also haven't gone to mental health yet. I'm going to go next week. So uh, that'll be different. But, you know, if you give meds, um, you have like take on one patient or two patients, depending on where you're at, give their meds, make sure that they're all good. Um, do assessments on them, um, kind of trying to tie in what you've learned in your classes of like, oh, this person has COPD, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, but it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, kind of like what um, Brooke and Natalie mentioned, there's different um, types of like types of clinicals you'll have. So like you could be following like or shadowing a nurse. And then as you like work through nursing school, you'll take on more like you're assigned to a patient specifically or two patients specifically. And you're like the nurse for those patients and you're doing all their care, like all their assessments, all their meds and stuff. And you're working like obviously with the nurses for that patient, but you take on more like responsibility as you go through like the program and stuff. Um, as for ICU and um, what like Natalie mentioned, um, since it is more like a new environment, it's not like a med surge, you do more like shadowing, um, but the med surge clinicals, you have those every semester. So you take on more and more responsibility as you're going through. So like this semester in my preceptorship, I'm taking on the full patient care load for like all four to five patients. So you like work your way up to it. Um, as for like how, the hospitals have been affected by COVID and how that like has changed a little bit. Um, I've seen less like patient census in the hospital. So hospitals have fewer patients um, just because there's not doing like as many surgeries. People aren't coming into the hospitals as much um, for just care that they need. Um, but I do think that's going to be upticking again soon. So I think there's going to be more patients as more people are coming back into the hospital, things open back up again. Um, I think we will be seeing more like mental health problems as a result from COVID. So people going into mental health, you'll probably get really good experiences with that. Um, we aren't, or like, with COVID, it makes it harder to go into patients who have like isolation rooms just because of like the lack of personal protective gear um, and they want to like preserve that for the nurses. So before COVID, we were allowed to do that and go into isolation rooms, but now like we may or may not be able to. Um, so that's kind of a difference I've seen too. So. Yeah, totally. I'm in critical care right now and in med surge, usually the patients are, they should be <laughs> on the stable -er side of the spectrum. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to participate in patient care, of course, like all of the medications and procedures, like if it's your first time doing it and everything, you need to be supervised by a nurse with a license just for safety precautions. Um, I know at the hospital I'm at, we not only need to wear face masks, but we also wear face shields. So like plastic things that like that hangs in front. 
Um, and yeah, with critical care, it's kind of crazy. I'd been in ICU my second semester. They kind of floated me, they float students down there and like rotated us through. And it's kind of overwhelming. It's crazy. You like walk into a room and there's patients set up with like five different brains and like, or five different IV pumps and like different medications. And it's just a lot to keep track of, but the exposure is just itself in itself is really educational. So very exciting. Um, is your cohort, and I know, I'm sorry, I feel like I keep like shorting Katie because you're like so fresh into it, but is your cohort really close? Um, do cohort, cohorts become close through the program? Can you elaborate on kind of like the dynamic there now that you have the same group of 40 people going through the two and a half years together? Yeah, so for us, most of our meetings are on Zoom, so all 40 of us have never been in the same place, so there's a lot of people I've never met, but the 10 people that are in my skills lab, at least we get to see them on a semi-frequent basis, and so we're definitely starting to get close. Yeah, the crazy thing is, I feel like COVID brought my cohort together, because so first semester we all met, and I like saw everyone's face, and we all got to like do all the icebreakers and stuff. And then now that COVID's hit, we have like a big group me of all of us. And we literally message like all the time throughout the day. Like people will be like, oh, don't forget this assignment. And it's like really sweet. I feel like I've already made lifelong friends and I've known them for like half a year. That's nice. Yeah, same. Um, our cohort is super close and there's a good like 12 or 15 of us that are like extremely, extremely close and we hang out all the time. Um, obviously we can't now, but it's kind of sad, but uh, yeah, we have a lot of group chats and like you get to know your cohort really well because I mean you're with them every day. I know it's different over Zoom, but hopefully in the near future it'll go back to normal and you guys could hang out with your cohort in class and because that's what we did and we, we always had such a good time. It was honestly kind of hard to focus in class. <laughs> yeah, I feel like every cohort is going to be different, um, but I feel like as the years, the, what is this now, our fourth semester, it's, we're definitely getting a lot closer. I think um, we, we have like a Facebook page. And so we use that all the time. Like, yo, like, what is this assignment? Or like, oh my God, like, when is this due? What is this quiz? And so we really like, like not, or uh, everyone was kind of talking about, we kind of try to look out for each other. It's really nice. Um, and also just like, it's hard and, you know, but we'll all get through it together. So that's always really nice. Yeah, I think you do like as a cohort get really close to each other. So like my first semester in the nursing program was when the campfire happened and that also brought us all like really close together. We had um, someone in our cohort had a baby. So that kind of brought us all together. We saw her through her pregnancy and having her baby, which was exciting. And also like I've made lifelong friends out of the nursing program too. Like people I just met in first semester, I'm now like maid of honor and bridesmaids at their wedding. So you really do develop like that lifelong connection and friends with people um, just cause you like, you do skills lab together, you do clinicals together, you do, you go through so much stuff together and like you're, like, you're there supporting each other like throughout the way. So you really do like become close over your like two and a half years, so. Awesome. Yeah, totally. I can attest to that. I have friends who I took like my prerequisite pre-nursing classes with and now, you know, we're going to graduate in May together and I live with them. So <laughs> I personally, I, you know, you're, it's always meant to be like, of course, like when I didn't get in the first time, it was so devastating. It's so hard when like, that's something you want so badly, but after kind of like making adjustments and reapplying and getting into like this cohort with this group of people. I have absolutely no regrets or no like hurt feelings or anything over that. I'm so glad I landed with the group of people that I'm going through school with. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left. Um, are there any questions um, that any of you guys have? Kind of like open the floor for anyone. If not, oh, sorry, go for it. You're fine. Um, during your guys' rotations, were you guys like in the emergency room or like anything like that throughout? Uh, yeah, so you, um, you don't have a specific 
clinical where you're placed in like an emergency part department. But I, I would say in um, every semester clinical, except for maybe first semester, I've been placed in the ER through either like one or two rotations a semester. Do you, so you do get like some experiences um, rotating through the ER and you see different traumas. It depends on what day you're there and um, what you get to see. Everyone has different experiences, but you do get a little bit of ER experience through your clinicals. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of, it's interesting because with um, COVID-19 and all the precautions, um, some of us lost like certain opportunities to rotate to that floor, which was a bummer. But in general, you're given a nursing education that you know should allow you to sit for your boards, which is the NCLEX, the test. It gives you the ability to get your license. And if you don't end up getting an opportunity to go to ED like I didn't, I can always, you know, try to like work my way there. Like nursing, you can go really any direction. I have an instructor who will talk about her experience in the ED, her experience in labor and delivery, literally anywhere. So that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, uh, let me see the chat. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I was yeah. also trying to ask that there. Oh, oh, that just like, yeah, you definitely get the chance in the ER. I got lucky enough to go into like to see a surgery once. Um, and so, yeah, you kind of, it's really going to depend on like where you're at and the availability, but yeah, it's fun. Okay, so to kind of round it out before um, I have some reminders, um, do you guys have any last like blanket statement piece of advice for everyone to share um, or everyone to hear? Definitely work hard and focus on school, but don't make it your entire life. I wish now that I'm in nursing school, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have hung out with my friends that one night or done that one thing because I'm like, Okay, I'm way overstressed. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to say you guys can do it. I have faith in all of you. It's okay. You don't have to be top of your class. You don't have to, you know, it's okay to get a B on an exam or a C or whatnot. Like, you're fine. You'll do it. Um, I just wanted to throw out there, I didn't know really where to put this. When you're talking about the T's, um, a couple of pre-nursing people actually reached out to me and I was like helping like tutor them. And I help get their score up a lot. So if any of you guys are really stressed about like taking it twice, like I'll tutor you somehow get my contact info. It's okay. Um, Do you mind putting your email maybe in the chat? Yeah, totally. Thank you so much, Tanya. That's awesome. Yeah, I would just say like last minute advice, just don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. It's, it's not a big deal if you don't get in the first time. I feel like for me, I just like put so much stress on myself. And the second I got like a B on an exam or like the T's really just like destroyed me. And I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna get in. Like you, you have your own paths. And like, I know so many people from pre-nursing that I've met along the way and they've had their own journey and they're all where they're supposed to be. So just don't put too much pressure on yourself is what I would say. Yeah. I think what everyone has said and just like my whole mantra has just been like one day at a time, like one class at a time, one day at a time, like one just like anything at a time. Um, so really just like take a deep breath, take one thing at a time. And I know that we've talked a lot about the T's and how hard it can be and difficult. Um, but I think a big part of it for me was like, even just like my mental, like how I looked at the T's was like, I like got so stressed and that just like translated into like test scores and how I took it. And so, you know, just take it one thing at a time, prepare the best that you can, reach out, use those resources, go to SI, go to tutoring if you're in those in science classes, try and get the best grades that you can. But, you know, yeah, do one thing at a time, take a deep breath. Yes. Um, my kind of last minute advice, um, just for like something different, um, I would say it's hard over Zoom, but I would say if you can make friends with other pre-nursing students, like go for it. I know there is like a lot of competition and I really do think if you work together and support one another, it makes it like that much easier. Like I had one really close nursing friend, um, pre-nursing friend that I did everything with and there wasn't a competition between us of who got better grades, um, who got 
like um, better like application points. So it was nice to have that support system and also have a friend who can relate to like what you're going through. And like we both ended up in the program. So um, just try to make pre-nursing friends if you can. Zoom is hard, but definitely support each other through this process. Okay, awesome. Um, so, sorry, I'm just trying to catch up with all of the notes. Thank you so much for, I guess, logging in. I know this is an unconventional semester and I appreciate everyone's flexibility. Um, please remember to stay in touch with all of like our social media platforms because that's kind of like the easiest way to quickly get word out about things to people. Um, my last personal piece of advice um, that I meant to ask about, but I know I know classes might be uh, weird for um, you know like what's being offered with everything being online. But I really recommend you guys look into getting your CNA license or your EMT license. I know in the new application, um, they're going to have more a more significant total of points associated with those licenses as well with your work experience. Um, also, if you guys are applying, I know everyone's kind of saying, nursing's like the end all be all, which is, that's awesome. Like if you're, if you're passionate about doing it, like you will do it. Um, but I really recommend the new application. Another new part of it is that if you, you can pursue pre-nursing and a different major. And so for instance, you can pursue pre-nursing, you're applying to the program, you're not getting in, but you're also pursuing a child development major. If you graduate with that degree, then that will give you more points applying to the nursing program after you graduate. So it's really important to continue your education in whatever facet. Um, that being said, Please utilize peer navigating if you have any questions. Julie's like the end all be all for all of the knowledge because she's your guys' advisor and she's been super hands on and like everything that has to do with the application. But keep in mind that she is busy and she's pretty much the only advisor for a group of like 500 people. Um, so with that being said, that's kind of all I got. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for our representatives for the panel. I appreciate you guys and I wish you the best. If any of you need anything, let me know. Brooke, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna plug like career navigating. Sydney mentioned it, but on our uh, on our website, there's like a list of like, peer navigating is basically nursing students that have, you know, we're in the program, but we're volunteering our time to kind of just sit on Zoom and answer any questions that anyone has. Um, whether it's about classes, about just nursing school, or whatever you have. Um, and so they are just sitting there on Zoom, and so they'd love to talk to you all or any nursing, I mean, any pre nursing students. So all of the Zoom link and all of that stuff is on our website, so definitely go check it out. Um, it's yeah. open Monday through Friday. Um, yeah. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about the uh, application. I was reviewing like the point system. And it was uh, saying something about like, if you speak a foreign language, you will get certain points. So I don't know, like I don't have the certificate for that, but like, how can I submit that to, with the application? You can, um, yeah, we'll just run a little bit over. Uh, you, I would reach out to, if, the, is the, if there is a department at Chico State or at Butte College where there's a professor, um, an associate professor or someone, uh, usually students can kind of sit for an interview in um, that language, whatever that language may be. So for instance, I sat for an interview for the language that I wanted to get proficiency points in with a professor who also spoke that language. And then that professor was able to write me a letter saying that like, this person is proficient in this language. And that's the way you can give um, proof, I guess, of your fluency. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, I feel like there's one more thing I was gonna say, peer navigating. Oh, and then our email and all of our contact information is on our website too, which is just Chico State Nursing Club. And it's like a Google website. So yeah, with that being said, I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, 
again, please feel free to reach out to us via email or like through our social media. We really try to stay on top of it and all the officers communicate with each other with all the questions and you know, we're, we're always going to be honest with everyone. So if we don't know an answer, we'll just, we'll redirect you to Julie or we'll try to relay um, the questions to Julie. So thank you so much. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to log everyone off. Um, okay. Bye everyone. <laughs> thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Great, thank you.